2009 Brazilian girl abortion case. In 2009, a nine-year-old girl was forced to be impregnated by her stepfather. The girl's mother helped her procure an abortion. The twin pregnancy was terminated. Archbishop Jose Sabrinho affirmed that the girl's mother and the doctors who performed the abortion had been automatically excommunicated under canon law. This prompted an array of national and international criticism for the Archbishop's actions. In response, the National Conference of Bishops of Brazil declared that no one was excommunicated in the case, and in an article published on El Osavato Romano of Vatican Bioethicist rebuked the Archbishop for his public statement. Law. Brazilian Penal Law. Abortion is legal under Brazilian law in cases of pregnancies resulting from rape or in which giving birth would endanger the mother's life. Canon Law. The 1983 Code of Canon Law says that automatic excommunication is imposed on a person who procures a completed abortion canon 1398, but not if, for instance, the act was done by a person who was coerced by grave fear, even if only relatively grave, or due to necessity or grave inconvenience unless the act is intrinsically evil or tends to the harm of souls. The Abortion Doctors in Recife performed an abortion on the nine-year-old girl on 4 March 2009. They judged her life to be at risk because of her age and because she was pregnant with twins and weighed 80 pounds. According to Fatima Mayer, the director of the hospital system, if the pregnancy continued, the child could suffer a ruptured uterus and hemorrhage, and she also ran the risk of diabetes, hypertension, eclampsia and lifelong sterility. She had been raped, allegedly by her stepfather. To bring her view and actions, as well as expressly denying that he had excommunicated anyone, but had only said that excommunication had been automatically incurred, Sabrinho said that the law of God is higher than any human laws, when a human law that is, a law enacted by human legislators is against the law of God, that law has no value. The adults who approved, who carried out this abortion, have incurred excommunication. In an interview, he added, They took the life of an innocent. Abortion is much more serious than killing an adult. An adult may or may not be an innocent, but an unborn child is most definitely innocent. Taking that life cannot be ignored. Sabrinho explained that the rapist's stepfather was not excommunicated because abortion, the taking of an innocent life, is even worse than rape. The girl was not excommunicated because minors are exempt from excommunication. Archbishop Sabrinho and his deceased also tried to prevent the abortion by approaching the child's parents, the state governor and the hospital where she was first admitted, after which he put off the abortion indefinitely. His lawyers then issued legal threats against the second hospital where the abortion finally took place. Government Reaction President Lee was in the seal Lula da Silva, a Catholic, criticised what he called the conservative attitude of the Archbishop in a case where the doctors were trying to save the girl's life, adding, in this case, the medical profession was more right than the church. Health Minister Jose Gomes Tempora described what he called the Catholic Church's position as extreme, radical and inadequate. Tempora, who had frequently clashed with the church on questions such as abortion and state distribution of free condoms, called on the participants in the National Convention on Women's Health to acknowledge the brilliant work done by the medical team who performed the abortion. National Conference of Bishops of Brazil The National Conference of Bishops of Brazil repudiated Sabrinho's initiative. At a press conference, Bishop Dimas Lara Barbosa, Secretary-General of the conference, said that the girl's mother was not excommunicated since she had acted under pressure to save her daughter's life and that there were no grounds to declare the doctors excommunicated because automatic excommunication depended on each one's degree of awareness and only those who were aware and contumacious were excommunicated. At the press conference, a document on excommunication written by canonist Enrique Perez Pujol, who stressed that the penalty should not be applied amid a polemic, was distributed to journalists. Archbishop Gerald O'Leary Rocher, president of the conference, avoided answering a question whether Sabrinho had acted hastily in saying that automatic excommunication had occurred. He said that at uh, no time did he want to hurt someone he was already hurting, but only wished to draw attention to the gravity of the deed of abortion in the face of a certain permissiveness regarding the life of the unborn. He said that Sabrinho had excommunicated no one, but had pointed out that the abortion entails the possibility of excommunication, which is a measure intended to make not only an individual, but the whole church community take note of the gravity of the deed. As for the rapist, he said that a rapist is outside of communion and in grave mortal sin, even though rape is not listed among the crimes that give rise to automatic excommunication. He said, rape is something so repugnant that the church does not need to call attention to it. It is punished by the state justice system, which does not punish abortion so much. He said that talk of excommunication seemed to have made people forget the crime of the rapist, who needed to be punished. Reno Fisicella The Holy See's non-official newspaper, El Osavato Romano, published a front-page article on 15 March by Archbishop Reno Fisicella, president of the Pontifical Academy for Life, that was highly critical of Sabrino's action. Fisicella said that the excommunication was automatic, so that focusing on it rather than on helping and supporting the child victim showed a lack of compassion that detracted from the credibility of the church's anti-abortion teaching. 
After reiterating the church's condemnation of abortion, he wrote that the moral situation was difficult because of the girl's young age and the risk to her life and praised those who allow to live and will help to recover hope and trust. He wrote, The conscience of the physician finds itself alone when forced to decide the best thing to do, a choice like that of having to save a life, knowing that one puts a second at serious risk, never comes easily. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith responded to press coverage of Fisichella's article calling it manipulation and exploitation. It issued a clarification that the article did not signal a change of doctrine and said that the Church's teaching on procured abortion has not changed, nor can it change. The clergy of the Archdiocese of Alinda and Recife took issue with Fisichella, stating that the local church had been supportive of the girl and her mother. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith ruled that Sabrinher had acted with all pastoral solicitude. The members of the Academy gave Fisichella a vote of no confidence because of his article, and he was reassigned in the next year to the Pontifical Council for promoting the new evangelization. Others. Cardinal Giovanni Bathister Re, Prefect of the Congregation for Bishops and President of the Pontifical Commission for Latin America, deplored what he called an attack on the church in Brazil. It is a sad case, but the real problem is that the twins conceived were two innocent persons, who had the right to live and could not be eliminated. Life must always be protected. The attack on the Brazilian church is unjustified. He added that excommunication of those who performed the abortion was just. Bishop Jean Mitchell de Falco of Gap, France, criticised what he saw as the unchristlike nature of Sabrin Hur's statement. He said that bishops should act as pastors rather than executioners. At the National Conference of Bishops of Brazil, he denied the applicability of Canon 1398 of the 1983 Code of Canon Law to the girl's mother because such an automatic excommunication does not apply to someone who acts out of grave fear. Other reactions Online March 2009, Health Minister Tempora interrupted the opening ceremony of a national medical convention on women's health in Brasilia in order to compliment Dr. Olympia Moriz, one of the doctors who carried out the abortion and who was in attendance. Participants gave Moriz a standing ovation. Moriz expressed gratitude to Sabrinho for the excommunication, which, he said, had drawn attention to Brazil's restrictive abortion laws. Another of the doctors involved said that he will continue attending Mass, praying, conversing with God, and asking him to illuminate me and my colleagues in our medical team to help us take care of people in similar cases. The United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child, in its January 2014 assessment of the Holy See's compliance with the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, cited this Brazil case. It urged the Holy See to review its position on abortion which places obvious risks on the life and health of pregnant girls and to amend Canon 1398 relating to abortion with a view to identifying circumstances under which access to abortion services can be permitted.